hello, this is Emma, is how I answer my phone. It saves a few precious seconds on every call. I learned it on my first campaign with my very first cell phone, a pink BlackBerry Mini. I was 17 and got into the campaign because my friend Emily asked me to go door knocking with her one Saturday afternoon. After a few conversations with strangers, I was hooked. What captured my heart in that first campaign was building connections and connecting others to new people and experiences. Field campaigning facilitates deep friendships amongst volunteers, and through phone calling and door knocking, enables hundreds of conversations throughout the community. I was a young idealist, and this was a clear, actionable way to change the world. Campaigning has brought me all over the world, from that first campaign in my hometown in northern Minnesota, to San Francisco, from Wisconsin to Trinidad and Tobago, and most recently, Western Australia. I've lived in Perth for about 18 months now. I came out here to work on two electoral projects. Lucky that, because I was able to witness a very important campaign. Two months ago, I started on the marriage equality campaign as a WA state coordinator. Before we get started, I have to add, I am an ally in this fight. I'm a white, cis, hetero female. I was raised by a village of gay and lesbian artists, Andy and Andrew, Sandy and Rochelle, Jeff and David, and Chuck. Chuck actually gave me my first pair of heels, glow-in-the-dark platforms, size 11. <laughs> they are my family and absolutely shaped who I am today. They are who I was fighting for. Four days ago, Australia finished voting on whether same-sex marriage should be legal. Four days from now, we will know the result. Right now, here today, we are in a suspended moment. The ball is in the air, where the campaigning is over, and we can discuss the process without the results clouding the analysis. The process was unprecedented. It was a non-binding, voluntary postal survey. Conducted by the Australian Bureau of Statistics, the ABS, not the Australian Electoral Commission. It had a voting period of about six weeks and cost the government more than $120 million. When we talk about change and how change comes about in society, it comes down to top-down change or bottom-up change. Top-down change is when the institution at the top makes an executive decision and the public fights or falls within that system. Bottom-up change occurs when individuals independently create change, and that becomes the collective norm or system. An example of top-down change is in the US, when the Supreme Court decided that same-sex marriage was legal. What that meant practically was you could be super out and proud on the coasts, but it was still difficult to be queer in the middle of the country. We just hadn't had that conversation yet. Here in Australia, this same-sex marriage postal survey is forcing a bottom-up change in our culture, where individuals are having conversations and demonstrations throughout regional and metro Australia about same-sex marriage and broadly the rights of LGBTIQ people. Top-down decisions are necessary at times, don't get me wrong, but genuine cultural acceptance comes from bottom-up change, where people sit in living rooms, dining rooms, sports clubs, and at the pub to discuss and discover our shared values as a community. And you can only create bottom-up change if the public is engaged and participating. Only if there is high participation can you create bottom-up change. There is objective evidence to the high participation rate in this campaign. For a non-binding, voluntary postal survey, the ABS has released the most current estimates of voter turnout is 78.5%. 12.6 million Australians have returned their survey. This beats voter turnout for Brexit, for Trump, and for the Ireland constitutional rec referendum. And when you consider Australian local government elections, <laughs> Non-binding, voluntary postal surveys over a multi-week voting period, voter turnout is estimated about 20 to 30 percent. I have witnessed few examples of truly organic participation. It simply defies my two rules of campaigning, which are, one, no one cares about your issue, and two, everyone is lazy. 
Those are the barriers we have to overcome every single day on the campaign trail. But not on this campaign. People got active and were proactive about their engagement without being asked. Let me tell you about my friend's younger brother. This guy was typically apathetic, didn't give two shakes about politics or current affairs. But when he discovered that all the surveys in his apartment building had been damaged and stolen, he took it upon himself to A, figure out how to replace a survey, B, replace them for every apartment in his building, and C, drafted up a note explaining what happened in the instructions on how to replace a survey. He then took it one step further and posted those instructions up at his workplace. That is an incredible amount of effort and initiative for someone to take without being asked. Bottom-up change occurs when individuals like this take it on. It inspires them to identify solutions and to act. So why was there such high participation? Well, one reason is that LGBTIQ rights are a global issue. It crosses class, race, gender, age, ableness, every single ism. That is unifying in itself. The people from a variety of backgrounds share this common thread. That global nature is overwhelming, and that motivates people to act. Another reason is due to the simplicity of the question. Should the law be changed to allow same-sex couples to marry? No major economic ramifications or complicated systems to consider, just about marriage. That inspired people to get active and take it on in a whole bunch of ways. One example is businesses, both large and small, took it upon themselves to make a rainbow version of their logo or a clever slogan. Sports organizations like the Australian Football League and National Rugby League stood by their support in the face of media and political backlash. Entire neighborhoods gathered to paint a fence or chalk the sidewalk. Nurses and security guards wore badges to show their support while at work. And most of this activity was not organized by the central campaign. Some said our campaign was leaderless, lacking a single figurehead. But that was its strength, in that everyday people everywhere took it upon themselves to lead in their own way. Perhaps most surprising to me, given my political background, were the different political parties and ideologies that came together around this issue. If our beliefs were a Venn diagram, we would overlap on a very thin margin. However, this middle ground provided an opportunity for us to get to know one another on an individual level. Sonia and Suzette were volunteers on the campaign. One is a union organizer, the other is a former Liberal Party staffer. One was apprehensive about meeting her first Liberal, the other disliked unionists. <laughs> They come from the left and right of the political spectrum, a highly unexpected friendship indeed. Through volunteering on this campaign, they've developed an understanding and appreciation for each other's work and respect for one another, despite their political differences. All these individuals and organizations got active and got engaged on their own. So there are three reasons why high participation generates bottom-up change. One is that when individuals campaign, it is so pervasive. Everyone is talking about this issue in different spaces. Spaces where values-based conversations, like politics and religion, are usually avoided. These are new conversations. Two is that people share their personal story. They're having the tough conversations one by one through their personal network. Sharing stories and experiences changes the way people view an issue. Third is that because this is happening, colleague to colleague, friend to friend, neighbor to neighbor, we're identifying our shared values. Identifying our shared values is so powerful. Because once we've decided on and named those values, We can stand by them and fight for them proudly as a united community. This conversation was not always respectful, and the entire exercise caused enormous pain on the LGBTIQ plus community. Asking any segment of society to vote, going cap in hand to their neighbors, asking for their dignity and self-worth is immensely painful. 
this mechanism for decision making was unprecedented and was pushed to a public debate due to a failure of leadership in our representative democracy. So, even though we didn't ask for this, win, lose, or draw, we cannot deny that a bottom-up change has occurred. High participation and individual engagement drives activity into communities in unique and unexpected ways. That forces new conversations, conversations that share information and experiences, which spreads understanding and empathy. By having these conversations, we identify our shared values and collective identity. That creates change on an individual level, from the bottom up. Thank you.